All right, so, as promised at the end of episode 3 of Pog Toys, I've grabbed my Tazo collection. Um, I'm kind of doing this as a bonus episode, or potentially a part 4, because, personally, I kind of take Tazos to be a spiritual successor to Pogs, basically, because they took their place, basically. I've also got a couple of Pogs from my collection, which we'll be going through, but... As I mentioned, I've got quite a few here, so I thought, hey, being as I'm looking at small cardboard disc things with patterns on from various series anyway, I might as well bust out my other ones. So as you can see, there's quite a few different series here. I've put them all in chronological order and stuff. So, without further ado, it's time to crack out the Joffrey Ash again, Mythology of the British Isles. And we're just going to take a look. So, uh, continuing on from the previous... Uh, see, uh, well, I kind of want to call her a series, I suppose. The Pogs, I do indeed have the World Tour. So, these I believe were given to me. I don't think I collected them myself. Uh, but, these are indeed actual Pogs. So, we're going to take a quick look. We've got this... They're, they're all hollow, which is pretty cool. We've got this, like, weird character thing. Uh, and that is the World Tour. So I'm going to put it in the back there. We've got a policeman version of this weird thing. I can't quite... Entry? Identity? Uh, something? Tick? Vog? I, I do not know. Oh, this is from 1995. WPF. World Pog Foundation, maybe? I do not know. Oh, it is Pog, yeah. It's officially a Pog. Very nice. We've got... Oh, a non-hollow. He's just running along the Great Wall of China, obviously, because this is a world tour. I suppose maybe the policeman was Britain, maybe, because it looked like a British thing. And the Sydney Opera House, of course, he is singing there. So I've, I've only got a few of these. As I said, I don't actually remember where I got them from, even. Uh, we've also got a couple whammers. Uh, so these are indeed, again, Pog-themed whammers. They're just like the plastic ones. Uh, so we'll go through these quickly. We've got Da Cruncher. Look, look at him there. Oh, this is 95 as well, so... Might be from the same pack or something. It's number 18. Uh, we've got... Oh, there we are. Just straight up says Pog TM. Uh, with a really cool pattern. This takes me back. I had this, obviously, when I was a child. Uh, so this is quite nostalgic for me. Honestly, this entire video is just going to be a nostalgia trip for me. And hopefully a little bit interesting for you guys. We've got Atomic Bomber. Look at him. He is a bomber. That is Atomic. And the final one is Rapid. Pog Rapid. There we go. So yeah, that literally finishes off any and all Pog things I own at all. Uh, so next up, we're going to go for the, the smallest series I've got. And by that, I mean I've only got two Tazos from this series. So these are indeed Tazos now. And this is from a, um, it's a British potato chip company. Well, they're not really, they're maize snacks called Monster Munch. Uh, I'll show you the back in a second. That's the orange monster. No, yeah, Monster Munch Tazo. This is the Mummy Monster. There's 10 to collect, and I've got number 33. I don't know how that works, but okay. And we've got the red monster. Now, orange would, I believe, appear on the pickled onion uh, variety. And red would appear on the flaming hot, I believe. And that is Ghoulie Monster number 36. As you can see, I've got them in the kind of uh, chronological order, because I do have a small binder, as I've mentioned, where I keep them. There's also a Monster Munch Tazo, but this is a th the Frozen Wave. This is number 7. Um, yeah, not as good, to be honest, that's the, f oh, oh, wait, oh, I'm an idiot, actually, hang on, no, this is from the same series, I think, maybe, um, 10 to collect, 30 to collect, uh, I don't know, I mean, the, the name of the pog is Frozen Wave, it's not actually a wave, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put this at the front and say these are from the same series, um, because, as you'll see later on, sometimes they change the colours on the back of the Pogs, uh, the Tazos, because I think there are various series of Tazos. 
Uh, right, so up next is going to be one I've got quite an extensive collection of, um, but honestly, like, isn't as cool, I think. Um, and that is this massive set. So let me just demonstrate as well. So the reason Tazos are slightly different, you can see these little notches here, um, and you can, like, slide them into other Tazos. I don't fully know the reasoning behind it, but apparently you could, like, I think make things with them. I don't know. But anyway, these are all Looney Tune based. Now I'm going to flip it over very carefully. Hey, there we are. Sorry, I'm back. I had to flip it over and it's very delicate. So, we're going to begin looking at this. We've got Yosemite Sam on uh, the drums. So it says here, Walker's Tazo, Yosemite Sam. Number one, 50 to collect. Um, for some reason, it doesn't say these are Looney Tune based, but these are all Looney Tunes. Um, I don't, well, I mean, it may say there. I'm too lazy to read on the legal print, but that was number one. As you'll see, I almost have a full collection of these, actually, because we've got Tweety Bird uh, rapping, obviously, because it's the 90s, number two. Um, but you will see, I do have, like, weird missing ones of, like, number five, number eight, and stuff. We've got Pepe Le Pew playing the uh, ukulele. Very interesting. That's number three. Oh, we got Bugs singing. So there's, like, a bit of a theme going on. This is all music-based at the moment. It's number four. So I think, as I said, I think the thing was they released these maybe in waves. Now... These all came in potato bags of potato chips, or crisps, over in the UK. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember his name now, but he's uh, Jimi Hendrix, basically. Uh, ah, Henry Hawk. There we are. So yeah, these would randomly come in, like, each small pack of um, potato chips, or crisps. Um, and yeah, you'd get them, you know, with every pack, and obviously you'd get doubles and stuff, and you'd swap... Uh, this is also kind of Bugs doing a Jimi Hendrix, I suppose. Bugs Money, number six. So, so far, I have all of the first six, which is very cool. Uh, I, I keep flipping over to the back. I don't know what. Hey! Wily Coyote kind of going um, heavy metal here, really, because he's got his uh, guitar, guitar pedal and stuff. And obviously, yeah, that's, uh, that's more intense. Number seven. Do I have the first ten, I wonder, in chronology? Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, that's slightly unfortunate. Um, obviously he's fallen off a cliff or something, but that does look like something else is happening to Wiley Coyote there. Ah, there we are, number nine. So yeah, so I'm missing number eight. Um, which is probably the last, like, musical-based Tazo, maybe. Hey, we've got Porky Pig, who's, like, Running and doing a shonen anime pose, number 10. So, yeah, I am missing some, unfortunately. I'm sure I may be able to, like, find them online. Uh, but as I said, this series I don't care about as much. But I, I just collected them because I was a child. we got Roadrunner, number 11. Oh, so it's meant to be... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. He's kind of at an angle, isn't he? Uh, right, we've got Sylvester. There we go, sorry. Uh, he's... Oh, okay, so he's playing sports now, so I think it's baseball. Uh, so, yeah, he's just been hit. That is indeed Sylvester. Next up, we... Ah, there we are. So, Wiley Coyote trying to run after Roadrunner, despite the fact Roadrunner is obviously a lot faster than him. Oh, Wiley, when will you ever learn? Um, right, next up, we've got Bugs Bunny playing some soccer. And the soccer is, is sort of... It is boosted by, like, the trio in Sonic Heroes, I guess. Sonic, Tails and Knuckles. Uh, Bugs Bunny there. Uh, yeah, so it, it's not a super interesting series, I don't think. Uh, Sylvester boxing with that kangaroo. I can't remember the name of. I feel like it showed up, didn't it? Sometimes in Looney Tunes. Or maybe I'm making it up, just mentally. Hey, we've got... Um, I can't remember his name now. The, the the Mexican mouse thing. Is he a mouse? I can't remember. He's playing basketball. Speedy Gonzalez. There we go. How did I forget his name? Uh, next up. Uh, so I don't think it's... Uh, oh, wait. Uh, technically, it's a sport, I suppose. He's bullfighting in uh, Mexico. Uh, Bugs Bunny, of course, that is. 
very interesting, maybe. I hope this is interesting to some people, at least. We've got Daffy Duck, like, dunking a ball through a, through a hoop. That is Daffy Duck. Good. Occasionally, when I was a kid, I'd call him Donald Duck and get them both confused. Okay, Speedy Gonzalez, uh... Interesting. He's using a baseball bat, but they all look like tennis balls. Okay. Fair enough, Speedy. I'm going to make two, uh, two rows of these Tazos, I think, because I don't want them falling over. We've got Bugs playing some tennis. Number 20. Uh, I think we're midway through the stack here. Hey! We've just got, like, the standard Taz the Tasmanian de Devil kind of view of things. The, the whole, like... Weird tube or whatever Loon teams would be in. There we are. Taz number. Oh yeah, and these all had points as well. So they see these were a continuation of Pogs, uh, in everything but name basically. We've got uh, Elmer Fudd. There we are. So we just got like character art now, I guess, which isn't quite as interesting. Oh, a very annoyed looking Sylvester. I I hope he's okay. He just wants to get that. No, I was going to say that Puddy Tat, but he's the Puddy Tat, isn't he? Uh, hey, Elmer F No, uh, Yosemite Sam. I like Yosemite Sam. I'm pronouncing it Yosemite. I think that's how it is, isn't it? Uh, Daffy Duck looking Daffy in a, a baseball cap, obviously. Wait, no, that's Roadrunner. That is Roadrunner. I'm an idiot. Okay, yeah, he's got a baseball cap. Uh, okay, cool. Sorry to all the Looney Tune fans out there. I'm guessing they're still Looney Tune fans. Oh, um, Foghorn Leghorn? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, these ones are less interesting because they're literally just close-ups of their faces. Wily Coyote, kind of wearing like a Robin Hood outfit, maybe? I'm guessing. Okay, cool. We've got Tweety Bird uh, wearing some 90s get-up, of course, because this is probably 95, 96 era. As you can tell, as a child, I ate a lot of potato chips, uh, and that has not changed to this day. <laughs> We've got Pepe Le Pou, the skunk. There we go. We are nearing the end now. Now's Daffy Duck. There we are. Sorry for confusing you with Roadrunner, Daffy. Uh, we've got, of course, Bugs Bunny. Uh, he's in a baseball cap as well, it looks like. Uh, number 40. Out of 50, we're getting close. And then we've got, like, the standard key art, I suppose. Ah, Suffering Succotash. That was his catchphrase, Sylvester. I like these, actually. They remind you of the characters. I'm hunting rabbits, whispered Elmer Fudd. Uh, don't support rabbit hunting, because rabbits are very cute. But, you know, hey. Uh, next up... Uh, you rackin' frackin' varmint! I hope YouTube doesn't remove me for language, for bad language there. Arriba, arriba, andale, andale is uh, Speedy Gonzalez, is catchphrase. We've got that, 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 that that's all, that's all, folks, uh, by Porky Pig. I did actually stutter there, so um, at the end, that's because I thought it was longer. You're despicable. I can't really do his lisp, though it's really difficult. You're despic... No, no. I'm not going to do that. Uh, What's up, Doc? Says Bugs Bunny. And the last one. I, I am a sucker for these kind of ones. No, wait, no, there's two. Never mind. Ignore me. I tore it to a puddy tat. And he did indeed. Tweety. And the last one, as I said, I'm always a sucker for this. It's like... It's the Looney Tunes! Look, they're all there, and it's like the gang's all here. There we go. And uh, that's 50. Oh, I didn't get the Taz one. I wonder what Taz's catchphrase would have been, because he just, like, flops his tongue about and spits and, and blows raspberries. That's really weird. Um, right, okay, cool. So, next up, a decently sized stack again. Uh, hang on. And the back of Tazos that gives me the most nostalgia, it's Star Wars Trilogy Tazos. So, these came out, obviously, before Star Wars Episode One: A Phantom Menace. So, these are just um, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, as we'll see. But let's begin. Uh, so, this is C-3PO, obviously. Yes, indeed. And so, there we are. We'll take a look again. It's numbered. They say there's 50 to collect again. 
Uh, this time, ah, it's the special edition. So this was George Lucas's re-edit, basically, if you remember. 96. So this is when I kind of start remembering Tazos, to be honest. They'd come in crisp packets, and I ate a lot of crisps as a child. Uh, number two, R2-D2, of course. Uh, this is when he's on Tatooine in New Hope. Number three. Ooh, we got a Tuscan Raider, boys. That's a Tuscan Raider from a New Hope. Oh, that is number three as well. Very nice. Uh, ooh, uh -huh. I don't know how many of this series I have. I have less than the Looney Tunes ones. That's for sure. Oh, we've got Luke when he's given his lightsaber by Obi-Wan. Uh, that is an Oh, that's number four. Yo, okay, cool. So I've got the first four. Yeah, okay, I'm guessing this isn't going to be number five because he's wearing the Stormtrooper outfit on the Death Star. Um, this is, yeah, number eight. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, ah, okay, I was about to say, I don't have a Han one yet, but I do indeed. This is Han Solo piloting the Millennium Falcon. Very nice. Sorry if the focus is a little bit off. Ooh, number 11. Okay, yeah, I'm really missing some uh, Star Wars ones then. Yay, there we are. We have Leia and C-3PO. Um, this is... Oh, this is when they're planning the Death Star run, isn't it, I think? Yeah, Princess Leia and C-3PO, number 12. So it's going in chronology. There we are, look. We've got the start of Empire Strikes Back, when Luke goes out looking for a crash droid in, on uh, Hoth. Luke Skywalker on a Tauntaun. Yeah, boy, we have the... Boy in green himself, BB Yoda, except it, it's a different character, obviously. It's Jedi Master Yoda. Look at him. All right, ne next up uh, is Han Solo, I do believe, in his Hoth winter gear. Number 50. That's really way. That's really strange. That's not chronology at all. So we've got Yoda after... Um, after Luke lands on Dagobah, and then we've got like Han from the start again. Hey, there we are, we've got Luke when he faces Vader, Luke Skywalker, very nice. So yeah, maybe this isn't quite as uh, exactly chronological as I thought. Oh, hey, that's the first Chewbacca Pog, actually. Uh, Tazo, I keep calling them Pogs now. Uh, there we are, Chewbacca, number 21. Yeah, it's very strange, actually, I don't know. Maybe they just wanted like the heroes first and then things later on. Oh, um, we've got Lando Calrissian, I think that is, kissing Leia's hand. Leia and Lando, and technically C-3PO in the back room, but I suppose no one really cares. Oh, yo! Okay, so this Tazo, I always like really liked, because it, it's the iconic scene of Luke. Oh, yeah. Spoilers, I don't want to give away anything else. Darth Vader, number 25. Yeah, I'm missing loads. You now I tend to look on like eBay and stuff, see if I can buy any more of these. We've got Jabba the Hutt in his... Uh, oh, and Salacious Crumb. That's it, the thing there. I've literally just started watching The Mandalorian. Um, I'm kind of enjoying it after one episode. It, it may get really bad, I don't know, but I've heard good things. We've got Emperor Palpatine. Yeah, there we go, number 37. Uh, ooh, this is an iconic one. Uh, this is the right way up, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's Luke versus Vader. Return of the Jedi now, aren't we? Yeah, Luke and Vader. I mean, technically it's versus, but they are both there. Okay, yeah, and then... <laughs> near... Ah, uh, well, wait. Was this from... Ah, uh, I can't remember episode 4 or episode 6, actually. Um, Snow Trooper on a Dewback. Uh, Sand Trooper on a Dewback. Why do I say Snow Trooper? Hoth is on my brain. Uh, oh, and got another, like, close-up of Jabba the Hutt there, and a side view. That's a bit weird. Jabba the Hutt. So I've got two Jabba coins, uh, Tazos, and one Han Tazo. Okay, we've got Vida uh, during his fight uh, in Empire Strikes Back. Vida and Boba Fett. Where's Boba Fett then? Is he? Oh, he's in. <laughs> wow, he's like he's behind the smoke because um, obviously Han was just turned to carbonite in that scene. Oh, there we are. I love you. I know. Han Solo, very stoic. We've got two more. We've got a... Is that Luke getting into the snow speed? Yeah, okay, yeah. To the snow speeder for the Battle of Hoth. Yeah, boy! Okay, cool. Man, I, I tell you what, I love the B-Wing design. 
Uh, it, it's silly, it's like strange, but hey, and there we are. Much like the Looney Tune one, I managed to get number 50, I believe, which just kind of typifies uh, Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition. It's just, it's a bit weird, really. It's a bit of a pointless Tazo, but I like it. Uh, right, I am going to change lighting for a second because it's going to get in dark. All right, I am back. So, next up, I am going to do uh, another very big pile I've got. That is Yu-Gi-Oh! Tazos. Let me zoom in. There we go, some Yu-Gi-Oh! Tazos. You can see I've got a big old pile here. Um, so I think this happens to coincide with when I was uh, in school. And so every day I had a packed lunch and I'd go in with a bag of crisps. So these Tazos, we'll have a look quickly, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tazo. So it's kind of changed as you can see. Um, it doesn't say Walkers anymore even though it is, well, sorry, it does say Walkers, just not Walker Tazos or whatever. Um, and yeah, and they became like holographic. Now the next set after this is holographic as well. Uh, no, not hologram. Is it? Is that what it's called? Uh, anyway, we've got Black Luster Soldier. And as you can see, it kind of like zooms in on him. Depends how you hold it. It's a bit of an awkward one. These aren't great, I'll be on. There we go, hang on. Okay, that's the best shot we're going to get. So that's Black Luster Soldier. Uh, next up, so we got some crackers here. Hey, Exodia the Forbidden One. Try and get a good shot of him. There we go. That's Exodia. And that's his face. Okay, I'm kind of working it out now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really not a massive fan of holo, hologram kind of things. But, you know. Uh, next up is Magician of Black Chaos. There we go. There's him. He's a, he, ooh, that that's a good angle. There we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I like Magician of Black Chaos. Sorry, he's number four. Exodia's number three. I am missing number one. Don't know what number one is. Maybe the like Millennium Puzzle or something. We've got Summon Skull. That's kind of hey. There we are. Cool. I'm only going to do this very briefly because otherwise the video is going to be about twenty minutes of me just flicking these tassels back and forth. Hey, Celtic Guardian. Part of Yugi's deck uh, from the start. Not a very good card, but you know, he's a staple. There we go, and he's number six, I think. We've got next up is, oh my goodness, Dark Siege. What? Hang on. What? That's Dark Magician, surely, right? Did they like censor it or change it? Or something. Because I know you guys had a lot of censorship over the years. Wow, okay, yeah, that's Dark Siege. Very interesting, number seven. Also, it kind of annoys me. They look miscut. But if you look... Oh, never mind, that is horribly miscut. Oh my god, the quality control of these is not great. That is terrible. Alright, next up. So, wait a second. Wait, no. This is Dark Magician. Wait, is Dark Siege a fusion monster, actually? Is it like Black Luster Soldier and Dark Magician or something? Maybe I'm wrong there. That is number eight or nine. I, I couldn't quite tell. Um, also, you're going to start seeing these Tazos do something similar to the Monster Munch ones in a second. We've got, oh, Gaia the Dragon Champion. Hey, there we go. Uh, Curse of Dragon and Guy the Fierce Knight, I believe, combined. Oh, these are really difficult to get on camera, I'm not going to lie. I'm really sorry, guys. Um, they don't look the best. Uh, yeah, that's really difficult to get. That is number nine, and we're going to see in a second. So the background colours changed, if you notice. Hey, we've got Joey, Joey Wheeler, everyone's favourite. Japanese guy from Brooklyn. Uh, there we go. He's got his dual disc and stuff. Yeah, boy. And the back colours changed as well. It is 10 now. And it does it in groups of 10, I believe. So, And I think these came out in kind of series as well. Like, 
you know, after a couple months, the blue series or whatever. Hey, we got red, ooh, red eyes, black metal dragon. Now, I'll be honest, pogs aren't the best way to show, because like Yu-Gi-Oh! Char- uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters are quite in-depth, you know, and like detailed, and this is not the best format. Like, this is a mess. I can't even see what's going on here. I... I, I really, uh, okay, yep. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay, cool, that's number 11. Sorry, there's lots of, like, dead air, because I'm trying to, uh... Oh, we got Thousand Dragon, which is what Baby Dragon evolves into. Uh, when you com- combine it with Time Wizard, am I right? Or was there a magic card? Ah, here we are, talking about Baby Dragon. Yo, do I have a Time Wizard one? I hope so. So that's Baby Dragon, that's its face. Okay, I kind I think I've worked out a decent angle now, maybe. Uh, next up, Blade Swordsman. Oh, fl- sorry, Flame Swordsman. I'm an idiot. Like, Blade, Blade Swordsman, that makes no sense. Well, obviously, because... Uh, there we go. He is... Uh, wait, no, he... Is he a, co- is he a fusion monster? No, he's not, is he? We've got Garuzis. Oh, yeah. So I've got a figure of Garuzis, actually. There's one of my first uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! figures that someone bought to me, and I, I could never remember his name. I always called him Lizard Swordsman. Yeah, boy. Now we've got Kaiba. Ha, ha, ha. Pathetic Yu-Gi. No, that's that's not very good. Kaiba impression. Forget I, forget I did that. I'm going to move my camera a little bit there. Yeah, okay, cool. That is everyone's favourite head of Kyber Corp. Uh, next up is Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which is a fusion of three Blue Eyes, if I'm correct, which is kind of cool. I don't have the regular Blue Eyes, though. Oh, hang on, wait. I do have Blue Eyes White Dragon, actually. There we go. Hmm. This is one that doesn't look amazing either, because, like, you can always see his mouth, it seems. Yeah. Okay, well, that is Blue Eyes White Dragon, and that's number... Oh, okay, so the, the background's changed again. It's purple now. Or it's about to get purple, or I... I I'm kind of lost... I've kind of lost track, to be honest. Got Sword Slater... Uh, sword... Sword Stalker. Yeah, boy. I always really liked Sword Stalker's design. They never do anything with this card. Is there much support in the like current? It's very dark. It's hard to see. I do apologize. Uh, right next up is um, is Pegasus himself, Maximilian Pegasus. Not much changes there, does it? Or is this a bit of a faulty one? Okay, that's really hard to get a good angle on. Thank you, Pegasus. Green background now. And I think we're actually near the end of this series. Got Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. Ah, look at him. He's a happy little Toon boy. Very cute. Uh, right, next up is... Ooh, um, the Toon Summon Skull. See, this looks quite nice. This looks pretty decent, actually. But, yeah, it's very hit and miss, unfortunately, with these designs. Um, we got a couple more. Oh, I've picked up two of that. we got a couple more. This is Thousand Eyes Restrict, which uh, kind of works, I guess. Um, we got three or four more, I think. Ooh, is this Relinquished? Man, this is a crazy card. It had, um, wasn't it something like uh, the, the monsters you tribute uh, combined as its attack or something? We've got Dark Rabbit. Look at that dark rabbit. He is happy to see you. Or, well, or happy to murder you, I suppose. I don't know, it, it's hard to tell either way. Hey, okay, we've got Manga Ryuran, uh, which is another way of saying toon, really, because manga is just a cartoon. There he is, hatching out of his egg. Very nice. Obviously, these are all of Pegasus's monsters. Oh, I didn't even. Ah. Oh. Oh, I thought this was Marek for a second. Uh, it's Mai. Not as cool, to be honest. Mai is kind of cool, I suppose, but oof. That's one that didn't turn out amazing either. It's got, like, after image everywhere. Uh, right, next up is... 
Harpy's Pet Dragon. And what a way to end the series on uh, on Mai's monsters. Like, I expected, like, God... <laughs> God Tazos, but yeah. Actually, you know, then I, I could be... I could be wrong there. Maybe there were Marek ones or something and I just never got them. And Harpy Lady Sisters. Uh, sorry, Harpy's... Yeah, Harpy Lady Sisters. There they are. Yeah, cool. Well, that was a slightly awkward one, wasn't it? And the last one I have saved, because um, obviously this is my favourite Tazu set. And also, one one I don't have quite as many as I'd like, and this is something I may look up to buying. That is Pokemon Tazos. Oh yeah, so I've technically got three small sub-series of these, so we'll get into them. Unfortunately, like the Yu-Gi-Oh ones, these are the kind of lentic... Is it lenticular, maybe? Hologra holo holograms? I don't know. Uh, but we've got Ash. Oh, that's really hard to get a good angle on. We have Ash, which is number one. To be a Pokemon Master is my destiny. Tazo, number one. We've got... Uh, oh, I keep picking up two of them. We've got Elekid. Uh, and weirdly, Elekid just moves his paws. So I thought he'd have evolved, but that is uh, number three. Elekid, type electric, height and weight and stuff. I'm not going to read out all of them. So this was around the time of the gold and silver cartoon that came out. Uh, the Johto Journey is one. Oh, that doesn't... That's kind of like Blossom on the side and in the front. It It doesn't... Yeah, that one doesn't really work great, does it? Okay, that is number f six, number five. It's really hard to see through the viewfinder. I do apologise. We've got everyone's favourite Johto Firestarter, because there's only one of them. Oh, Cyndaquil has three pauses. Look at that. So it's like up there, sideways, and down. Oh, that doesn't turn out very well as well. Yeah, these are not the best, to be honest. Uh... We've got Tortodile, the water starter from Johto, who I really like. Uh, there we are. So we've got side view, front view. Wow. Yeah, that's very awkward. Okay, there are three pauses, but he kind of looks like a monstrosity. We've got Maril, uh, who, yeah, is Gen 2. I keep forgetting because it was in the cartoon, wasn't it? Maril looking sideways and on. Uh, that's number nine. Sorry, I didn't look at Tortodile, but Tortodile's number eight, obviously. We've got Centret. There we are, that's more of a difference in pause. Eh, he's on his tail, or he's stood on the floor. Uh, that's number 12. Uh, and yet again, obviously, these came in packs of crisps as well. My god, I keep picking up two of them. Uh, right, we've got uh, a Hoppy Boy. That's really difficult to... So he's sideways, and then he's front on. That is indeed Hopip number 20. Man, I have less of these than I thought I did, and everything's gone really blurry. Uh, next up is Pseudo Wudo. I love Pseudo Wudo. Uh, also, I kind of like the background uh, kind of in, you know, mentions its type, which is rock, obviously. Hands are up, or hands are down, and that is number 21. Very nice. So I'm pretty sure I swapped for some of these in school as well. Pokemon cards are banned, but Pokemon Tazos weren't, because technically they were in food until that was outlawed. Wobbuffet's pretty good, actually. That's probably one of the best ones. Uh, yeah, there's not much bleed over. That's 22. And the last one of this series is Gligar. Uh, oh, there we are. So he's got, that's the like standard design, and that's him sideways, I guess. It's kind of an interesting one, uh, and that's 24, because, like, fans can see what they look like and stuff, because these were new. Th this is when the, like, the games were just coming out. BRB. Okay, sorry, I, I tried to be a clever guy and slide over some pogs, but they fell, uh, unfortunately. Anyway, so, we've got this Mareep one that evolves into Flaffy, and then Ampharos. God, I hate having to hold it this way, it's so strange. You can kind of see Ampharos. But yeah, I, I really like this one because Mareep is my favourite Pokemon from Gen 2. 
But as you can see here, the reason it's technically different is it adds 10 new Tazos to collect. And then see Walkers Co UK for more information. Because as you can see, that is number 30. Um, so basically, I think this was like, again, another series or like mini series. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Okay, so the, the two of them I, of these I have, as it happens, are some of my favourite Pokemon because there's Hitmon Lee, there's Hitmon Chan, and Hitmon Top. There we go. So uh, Hitmon Chan is one of my favourite Pokemon from Gen 1. And then we have one more series to go. And these ones are a lot easier because. Uh, as you'll see, they are just straight-up pictures, so this is Slugma. And this is because they are Pokemon Sticker Tazos! Um, never worked out what the colour thing meant. That always confused me as a child. But yeah, so this is a separate series. These are obviously just stickers. I am never going to undo the stickers, because what's the point? We've got Meowth in his standard pose. Kind of cute. Bit chunkier than he is now, isn't it? Same as uh, with Pikachu and Eevee. We've got Chinchou, uh, so obviously these are like Gen 2 again, but, um, ah, there we are, does that say Tasty? So these are, f uh, these have like different languages on them and stuff, which is interesting as well. Now I don't remember where I got these, but I'm guessing they came in crisps as well. We've got Yanma, very cute, and the very last one, and the way to end this episode, and this series indeed, is with Iglybuff. I don't know what that says about this series, but... Oh! Wait! Whoa! 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 Hang on. Is this... Okay... Right, I don't know what's going on here. So I... So this is apparently Pokemon Tazo 3. Is this real? That's very strange. Uh, also, I, I've kind of noticed it's a bit uh, interesting in that... If I grab the Star Wars one... That um, these Atazos obviously were a spin off of Pogs. And if you notice, these Pogs now do not have any of these anymore. Uh, which actually makes them more similar to Pogs. So we've kind of come full circle, bizarrely. Um, yeah, that about wraps it up. Thank you for indulging me and staying with me whilst I have a trip through memory lane. Uh, these Tazos were a big part of my childhood. This. I think this is one of the main things that got me into the whole collecting aspect in that, ooh, they've got numbers, ooh, I could get more of these and stuff, and uh, went from there, and then I started buying Pokemon cards, and the rest, of course, is history. But thank you very much for watching uh, this Pog series. It's been a lot of fun, honestly. I thought it'd make for just an interesting one video, but as it turns out, it's made for a four-part series, which is pretty darn cool. If I do end up buying some Tazos, as I've kind of threatened to do the last few times, uh, last few episodes now, I will obviously probably do an update for Pog Toys episode 5. But um, as it happens, this is the end of the Pog Toys saga. As I said, thank you very much for watching. I will be making other videos and there's some podcasts and stuff coming up, so stay tuned for that. I can't think of any like witty way or interesting way to end this video, so I'm just going to say goodbye.